Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and managing partner of SkilledWorker.com. Today, Colin, we're going to be discussing a very exciting development in Canadian immigration news. So Canada is going to be expanding the provincial nomination program allocation by 33% over the next three years. So, I mean, if, you, if you're interested, please do check our, our, our website. We do have an extensive article which goes into a lot of detail on this topic. Uh, but Colin, what are some of the highlights? So, as everyone knows, the immigration industry is uh, in one in which there's a, a shared jurisdiction between uh, the federal government and the provinces. Uh, of course, the, the, the federal government is the biggest uh, uh, player in the field. They bring in the most individuals under their own programs. But the provinces uh, over the past 10 years have enjoyed an increasing role in bringing immigrants to their own provinces. And the reason, of course, Canada being so vast uh, and the labor markets uh, are really specific uh, to each province. And sometimes when the economy is doing really well, there are provinces who are not doing so well. So it's really important that the provinces, and, and, and this is what's been taking place, and, and in the uh, recent policy announcements, the federal government has agreed to increase uh, the annual levels or the quota allocation. We use, don't like to use the word quota in immigration uh, on the Canadian uh, industry, but in fact, that's really what it is. Uh, so just to get a general idea, first of all, what we're talking about in, in part is this uh, editorial that we put together. It appears on our website. Uh, and you can check the details of it. But what's really important to note is that over the next three years, Canada has, has plans to ramp up the numbers uh, of individuals uh, that are going to be admitted to Canada. We're going to surpass 300,000 each year. Now, just to get a sense, the economic class accounts for about 175,000, just about a little under 175,000 individuals. Now, the economic class is divided between uh, the federal government, the main driver of economic class immigrants coming to Canada, uh, are going to come under the federal express entry system. And the provincial programs are about, uh, they're, they're going to be targeting uh, over three years, it'll go up to about 67,000, uh, which is about 40% of all immigrants coming into Canada on the economic side are going to access uh, through the provincial programs. Quebec is not part of this picture. They have their own stream. So uh, Quebec will be uh, in its own uh, process, and they'll have uh, permission to bring in, under different agreements, about 30,000 economic class immigrants. It's about 17 and a half, 18 percent of the total economic stream. Uh, so the numbers are really interesting, uh, and really that's uh, the biggest takeaway, and again, you can watch our videos. We've talked about uh, the, the role the provinces play and how uh, this interplays with the federal system. Uh, you can check out our previous face, uh, live stream uh, videos from Facebook. Um, you have our carousel on the front section of our website. You'll see our, our video carousel or Immigration CA. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, we're pleased to say we've we've got over 11,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel now. So check out those previous videos to have an understanding of how the programs work on the provinces. Perfect. So I guess moving on to uh, I mean the topic, who can qualify for these provincial programs? So typically, it's really important to understand is that the provincial programs uh, are hard to access for most people unless you have an employer that's going to sponsor you. It's really what we call employer driven. So that means that when employers go out and uh, recruit candidates and people are in the province on a work permit, uh, those individuals, the employers can retain these individuals or individuals coming to Canada uh, who uh, have a job uh, can be uh, really the, uh, the, the the, the, the fact remains there's a good likelihood they'll be able to permanently remain in Canada once you come to Canada on a work permit because the provincial programs uh, are very uh, employer driven and an employer uh, who has recruited there is a retention uh, benefit that the employer can certainly utilize and that's the provincial nomination stream. Uh, there are other people uh, who surely can access the provincial programs there are those who are candidates in the Federal Express Entry System. There are some provinces that uh, utilize 
uh, the the federal express entry system. Through their provincial program, they go into the express entry pool. Ontario is really the biggest user of the federal express entry system, where individuals who don't have enough points uh, on the federal express entry system. We had a draw yesterday, okay. uh, a large draw. Again, there were 3,500 individuals who received invitations. The CRS, or the Comprehensive Ranking System score, was 441. It's been falling, and it's expected to decline uh, in the months ahead. Um, so the province of Ontario, for example, will go in and select individuals or nominate individuals, issue an invitation to apply where, for example, they need skilled trades or where they, for example, need IT professionals. Very often what we'll see is scores in the low 400s, so well under 441 in the low 400s. That's the biggest player. There will be other provinces that, there are other provinces that occasionally dip into the express entry pool. But really, the, the fact remains that there are also individuals who um, uh, can go into the uh, provincial program if you're on a demand list, for example. Uh, some of the provinces, Saskatchewan is one of them, uh, where they have a, a specific demand occupation list, but the problem is those demand occupation lists, when the province goes to market, as we say, and they open up a particular occupation, the, the fact remains that the, uh, the period of application, it closes, in some cases, within hours. So you really have to have your application ready. Uh, it's, some people are submitting applications to a province, like Saskatchewan, and they don't have the, the points, and they're going to be refused. So it, it really doesn't make any sense to submit an application on your own to a province that has a demand list when the demand list is not even open. Uh, what's really going to happen is you're, you're going to be forced to, to, to go out and look for a, an employer. So if you're going to access, those are the types of people who can qualify. Again, the major takeaway is you need an employer to sponsor you. So that's ideally, or again, if you're going to be in the Federal Express Entry Pool, uh, that means you have the basic requisites to get into that system. Uh, some of the provinces will, will select people from the uh, uh, Express Entry Pool, uh, but again, that's a very limited, um, uh, that's quite a limited application that we've seen so far. So moving on, who should apply then? Well, really, because it's so employer-driven, uh, if you're, the, 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 the fact remains, there are so many people who are in the Federal Express Entry System that qualify as a federal skilled worker, for example, which is the biggest component of Express Entry. Uh, if you look at the breakdown of people who are in the Express Entry System, they're individuals with a CRS score in the 300s. Now, typically, there are such fabulously qualified people who are working, for example, in the United States, or they're working in the UK, or <clears throat> they could be working in India, for example, a very major uh, source country for Canada. Uh, these individuals uh, are highly qualified, but the problem is they don't have enough points to qualify under the express entry system. We see the draws. The, the, if you take a look at our website under the express entry component of, of our site, you'll see uh, all the draws that have taken place over the last uh, three and a bit years. And you'll see currently uh, the, the required score, the cutoff is, is generally, and we can't say what the future will be, it's about 441 points. It's gone down significantly from, from that number. But if you are middle-aged 30, you're 35, you're 37 years old, you're 33 years old, uh, you have a bachelor's degree, uh, your CRS score is going to be likely in the 300s, in the high 300s. Uh, so this is a program that you could access. Uh, this is a program that if you're already a federal skilled worker applicant in the pool, uh, or I will also say that the, this program could also be interesting if you don't even qualify to get into the federal system. You don't have, for example, the minimum requirements 
such as you don't have the basic language requirements. Now, you need a CLB 7 to apply into the Federal Express Entry System. Uh, or, of course, not or, but in addition to that, you have to have 67 points to qualify to get into the Federal Express Entry System. For those individuals who don't even qualify, the provincial program can be an option for you, but of course, the biggest challenge, you need to find an employer. And there are options for you uh, in, in that as well. Uh, let's, let's, let's go into that. Okay, so as Colin stressed, it's very important to find an employer. So Colin, what about recruitment? So how, you know, how can all of this fit together with how we can help them? So in all of our mandates, we have really uh, been, become the leader in the immigration industry when it comes to intermeshing both the uh, employment search and the immigration. We've always felt it's not enough just to be an expert on the immigration side, and that's why we've become very adept on the recruitment side, both for the individual candidate who's applying uh, to Canada, and as well employers who we do recruit for, uh, but I'll get into that in a, in a bit. So every single individual that, that comes to us is, is really uh, going to be given a very comprehensive employment search, uh, a very extensive job search to identify potential hiring employers. Uh, we do this through our uh, two uh, assets that we have, skilledworker.com, which is a leader in foreign recruitment, and grnmontreal.com, which is a uh, 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 placement agency that is uh, really a skilled uh, transition enterprise. It's an American uh, asset that was created back in the early 2000, 2003. Uh, it's out of Chicago, Illinois, and we became a franchise uh, of GRN Montreal. Our, our franchise is grnmontreal.com, uh, and we're one of 176 franchises, so we've really become uh, knowledgeable on how the employment and recruitment industry uh, works in North America. Um, so for individuals who want to access a provincial immigration program, which again is very employer driven, ideally you need a work permit. So individuals who can't qualify uh, for an immigration program like the Federal Express Entry System, uh, you can uh, look to an employment option uh, and we can help you in how to navigate and identify uh, potential hiring employers. Uh, for our federal um, clients who are qualified to the Federal Express Entry System, you may qualify into the system. We don't know the future of where the CRS scores are going to go, uh, but uh, so we're looking to apply and make an application for residence, permanent residence, but again, that coveted um, job is going to really be your pathway to Canada. Uh, let's go into the actual employment services. Okay, so what we do is I mean, we, we tailor make every self-directed employment search package to each client. So uh, you know, our clients receive a Canadian style resume, uh, a Canadian style cover letter, as well as a database of potential hiring employers in their field. So obviously they would choose the provinces that they're interested in relocating to, as well as the industry. Uh, and also we also have a very, very exciting development with regards to how we'll be assisting with regards to LinkedIn. Uh, so Colin, how, how will we be assisting with LinkedIn? So what we've uh, come up with, we've put together an, an excellent program. The, the, the proprietary software that we now have access to uh, will allow us to give everyone uh, a 60-minute face-to-face live tutorial on how to use LinkedIn to find a job in Canada. Uh, a part of what we do, of course, is we help everyone perfect their online digital profile on LinkedIn. Uh, and what we are able to do using the proprietary technology that we've uh, acquired and we've developed together um, with uh, uh, our partners uh, at DRN Montreal, skilledworker.com, um, is that uh, companies who are hiring, we are able to identify in Canada companies that have recently hired uh, we're able to help you identify who are the hiring managers in your field, uh, who are the decision makers. This is very important because 
uh, it helps you understand um, the potential option, the, op the opportunity for employment for you uh, in Canada. What's really uh, what we try to discourage individuals from is going into online job boards. Uh, those are just passive, we've used this phrase before, uh, they're passive beauty contests. Uh, you have no control over an employer, uh, HR manager, who's going to uh, put effort in finding your profile, your digital profile. Um, so what we try to do is help you stand out from others who are looking. And this is not going into an online job board, but this is actively searching using the, the powerful technology that we have access to now, is how to, uh, and we're going to teach you, uh, on a face-to-face -face live tutorial, every individual, uh, whether you are already in the Express Entry system, we can help you do that uh, if you become a client of our firm, uh, or if you don't even qualify for the Express Entry system, you don't have the right points, you don't have the language, you, you have to have certain ability in language, but for some people they have the CLB7, let's say, on three of the components, but they're missing on one of them, and that would be a barrier for them to qualify. But yet, they're still very, they're very, they speak well in English, uh, they may be just weak on one of the elements, so that they just are short in getting an application into the Federal Express interest, uh, Entry System. We can help such individuals because we help you in learning how to put yourself in the position of identifying um, potential hiring. What's really interesting is we can go through the geographic areas of Canada, not the Toronto's necessarily, the Montreal, the Vancouver, the Calgary, but we can, we can identify geographic areas where we see there are trends for hiring depending on your background, your occupation. So our, uh, our new, uh, starting May 1st, our new face-to-face uh, 60 -face, minute a live tutorial, uh, we use a conference platform and we walk you through how you can uh, access potential hiring opportunities. And that's in addition to the 500 employers that we're going to give you uh, in the database that we prepare for you. So quite simply, we're going to empower our clientele on how they can navigate jobs uh, in, a, in a complex search process, uh, how to stand out, and this is a joint relationship between us and the client uh, we're not what we what we want to discourage people to think we're not getting you a job offer this is we're not handing you a job offer uh, we don't have uh, the ability to find you a job offer this is for people who are committed who are familiar with LinkedIn uh, and who will become more familiar using our access to proprietary technology that will help you empower yourselves to identify hiring uh, opportunities. Quite simply, our services are unparalleled, they're unmatched in the industry. There is not that we know of uh, a professional entity that has this capacity uh, on the employment side uh, that we've made uh, really clear before. All right. So moving on to employers, what about employers? How can employers benefit from this? So, you know, the, the, the fact is that we are approached on a regular basis uh, by Canadian employers who uh, either need assistance on the immigration side, uh, they have their own recruitment team, uh, they, they have identified someone. So for sure, we're, we're, we're very uh, suited to helping an, an employer in navigating the immigration formalities, as most competent immigration professionals would be able to do. Uh, what we bring to the table uh, through skilledworker.com, through grnmontreal.com, is we're able to package uh, for an employer an actual recruitment strategy. We can go out and find wonderfully qualified individuals. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to uh, tailor make uh, uh, what we say is a, a recruitment package. We're going to define the territory where we can find those potential candidates coming to Canada. We would devise a campaign uh, that will uh, allow us the best chances for success of, of finding those candidates. We'll devise a print ad strategy. We have 
uh, extensive experience in what parts of the world certain areas of the world work well with print, some areas don't work so well. And naturally, using LinkedIn with the power of the technology that we have, uh, we're able to identify potential employers using the software uh, that we have access to. And of course, our social media, uh, knowledge in social media, uh, we have a very high presence in social media, both on LinkedIn, uh, on Twitter, um, uh, Facebook. Uh, the combined reach on our social media uh, presence is unmatched by any immigration professional in the industry. There are some who have uh, good presence, social media, but on the combine of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, we're very skilled in the uh, use of social media. So that forms a small component of the job search. Uh, and we would then create a short list of candidates for an employer. We would help them schedule interviews. Sometimes an employer that we've worked with will want to go over to meet candidates face to face, or sometimes individuals are already in Canada, they're visiting Canada, uh, which is what we do encourage our individual clients who are uh, subscribing to our services. We do encourage them to visit Canada wherever possible. Uh, we'll schedule the interviews and then what we'll do is the employer will then go out and make a decision on the hiring. From there, we take over and do the immigration side. We, we decide what immigration visas are going to be required and then we go through the application process. So all in all, uh, interesting on the recruitment side, typically recruiters will charge 20% uh, of the annual first year salary. We charge a fixed fee for recruitment, fixed fee for immigration. Uh, so all in all, we bring really good value uh, to an employer uh, in the sense they can quantify their costs, uh, they know in advance. Uh, this is for individuals really uh, who may have used a recruiter before, but let's be, let's be clear, using a recruiter, it's going to cost upwards of 20% for individual. Uh, if you're using lower hourly, if you're going to use an hourly employee, uh, you're looking to recruit an hourly employee, you're still going to pay 10%. It's going to work out to more than 10%. What we generally are able to do is come under the 10% platform, just under the 10% uh, when it comes to all the costs involved, uh, and so uh, we're able to bring excellent value to an employer. So all in all, uh, if you're looking to access the uh, provincial program, uh, both uh, as an individual uh, immigrant to Canada or an employer uh, who's looking to recruit and then eventually retain an employee, uh, the provincial nomination program is here to stay and it's growing in its relevance in the immigration industry. That's great. Great. So, uh, so for all of you who are interested in coming to Canada or our services, uh, you can go on our website, immigration.ca, and complete our free online evaluation form. If you're an employer, please do, go, please do contact us as well. You can just go to the Contact Us section of our website. And if we are already in contact, we'd love to hear from you. If you are, if you are interested and you want to discuss things further to take it forward, please contact us as well. So, Colin, I guess uh, we'll, we'll have another live stream schedule soon. Yes, uh, our, our next topic, we're already lined up for uh, an interesting round in May. Uh, so, uh, we are, we'll stay tuned for that. Um, and like us yes. on Facebook. What do we have to do? Uh, just like us, follow us on all our social media. As Colin outlined, we have a very strong social media presence. And well, we welcome their comments. We uh, definitely yeah. uh, encourage uh, readers and viewers Please share with us your thoughts on uh, the reading mat the material that we're putting out there. Uh, please let us know how you found today's presentation. And thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.